Okay, this is the third video in the Unit 3 series. It is on compound composition. And here, we're going to look primarily at two things. The first is com percent composition, and then we're going to turn to uh, experimental data and look at empirical formulas. So we're going to start with percent composition, and then we're going to go back to the mass spec to look at experimental data and use that to find an empirical formula. Having the empirical formula allows us to calculate molecular formula. So percent composition is just um, a relatively simple equation. There's not a whole bunch of variables here. You take the grams of the element in the compound, and this should be the total grams of the element in the compound, over the total grams of the compound times 100. So for example, if we're looking for the percent composition of hydrogen and water, we know, for example, hot, uh, water is H2O. And if we wanted to look at the percent composition, we need to really figure out how much hydrogen or how much of water's mass comes from hydrogen. So here we have hydrogen and oxygen. There's two hydrogens, one oxygen. Molar mass of hydrogen is 1.01. .01. Molar mass of oxygen is 16, giving us a total mass of hydrogen of 2.02 .02 and a total mass of oxygen of 16 grams per mole. This gives us a total mass of the compound as 18.02 .02 grams per mole. Now, taking the time to set up this table, I now have this whole column for total that I can use Interesting. There it goes. Um, for this calculation, percent composition, we're going to look at the grams of hydrogen over the grams for water times 100. Well, we don't want to use the atomic mass of hydrogen. We want to use the total mass of hydrogen in water. And so we're going to use this 2.02 .02 grams over the total mass, which is down here, the 18.02 .02, times 100. So in our calculator, you have 2.02 .02 .00 .00 divided by 18.02, .00 or basically 11.21%. And this is percent hydrogen, because we started with hydrogen on top. If we wanted to find the percent oxygen, we could do that as well. We're going to take the grams of oxygen over the grams of water times 100, which is going to give us 16 from here over the 18.02 .02 times 100, which should give us 88.7. 9. Now, ideally, because there's only two elements here, this should add up to be 100. 0 carry the 1, 0 carry the 1, and it does, all right? So because we have 100% of our compound accounted for here, that's just another way to check. Calculate the percent composition of hydrogen and sulfuric acid. Here we have atom, number, mass, and total. If you don't remember, ion, number, charge, total. Hydrogen has got a plus one charge because it's in group one. Sulfate, you should have memorized, has got a minus two charge. To balance this, we need two hydrogens one sulfate to give us a plus two, a minus two, or a zero overall charge. This gives us H2SO4. Okay, so for our molar mass, to get our percent composition, we're going to come up here and say hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. We have two hydrogens, one sulfur, and four oxygens. 
Again, guys, this is a little different than what most books do. I tend to make my table so that I remember to count everything. I'm not worried about leaving off an understood one or anything like that. From the periodic table, the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1.01, .01, sulfur is 32.06, and oxygen is 16. So that gives us a total from hydrogen of 2.02, .02, sulfur is 32.06, and oxygen is 64. Adding together, we get 98, oops, I'm sorry, 98.08 .08 .08 grams per mole. Um, we can now use this column in our percent composition. To find percent of hydrogen, we're going to take the grams of hydrogen over the grams of the compound, which is the grams of hydrogen plus the grams of sulfur plus the grams of oxygen times 100. That gives us 2.02 .02 grams of hydrogen over 98.08 .08 grams for the H2SO4 times 100. And you should get something like 2.06, oops, 2.06% hydrogen. That is really um, what percent composition comes down to. You do have a lab on this, um, and so you'll be doing a little bit of this type of calculation in, in a lab as well. There it goes. Nope. There. Now, it's relatively easy to do a percent composition problem um, using a chemical formula. The thing is, it doesn't always come out to be that pretty when we're talking about a sample of an unknown. You can't just use molar mass there. You have to rely on experimental data. And so we kind of go back to that idea of mass spec, where you take a sample, you put it in a furnace, you vaporize it, and you evaluate how much of each element um, is present. Because you're burning it in the presence of oxygen, most of the time the carbon comes off as CO2, water, uh, hydrogen comes off as water, and so on. They come off uh, oxygenated or oxidized. Um, now, I'm not going to ask you questions really on this part of it, but I want you to understand that this experimental data does come from somewhere. And so a lot of times what we'll do is we'll take an unknown um, and we'll plug it into this mass spec with the idea of trying to figure out what is the overall composition. Um, it does provide us a little bit of information about the compound itself. And then we can use NMR or IR um, to really gain even more information about uh, what the molecule truly is. And so if you had an unknown fertilizer or an unknown um, compound that was making people sick, you could do these analyses to really understand what could be there. Now, because the mass spec is going to give us a ratio, it is going to be um, not really the molecular formula it spits out. And so we have two types of formulas we need to look at. The molecular formula is really the one that we care most about. It tells us the actual number and what atoms are bonded together. But a lot of times from the mass spec, what we're going to get instead is the empirical formula, which is the simplest ratio of those elements. So for example, if we were to look at glucose, glucose has the formula C6H12O6. It has um, six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. This is what is actually bonded. But what we would get as a ratio coming out of experimental data would be the lowest common denominator, 
6, 12, and 6 are all divisible by 6. So if we were to divide each one of these by 6, you would get a 1, a 2, and a 1. And so the empirical formula would be C, H, 2, O. Now, what it really means is that the empirical formula, the C, C, H, 2, O, is really just a multiple of the molecular formula. So while we're going to be able to calculate the empirical formula, we're going to then turn that into finding this multiple to find the mo molecular, okay? So we would report the empirical as the simplest ratio. We're going to report the molecular as what it actually is. For empirical formula problems, I use eight steps. Now, <clears throat> because you're going to be given a percentage, the first thing you need to do is assume that those percents refer to a 100 gram sample, in which case whatever percent you have is equal to grams. The second thing you're going to do, because we don't want to do anything in grams, is you're going to convert to moles using the molar mass of each element. You're then going to have to look at the number of moles. Usually this is going to be something like 0.69 or 1.42. We don't write it as C6, uh, 0 0.69 or H1.42. Instead, we want whole number ratios. So this third step is you're just going to take the smallest number of moles from your calculations and divide everything by that. Hopefully that will give you a whole number. If not, you will have this number four. Sometimes you have to do number four, sometimes you don't. If you do not have whole numbers yet, you're going to multiply um, to get by the by a denominator to get a whole number. Then you're going to use that whole number set of moles to write the empirical formula. Those are going to be your subscripts. And then if you have to find the molecular formula, you're going to calculate the molar mass of that empirical formula, divide the molecular formula's molar mass by the empirical formula's molar mass. That's going to give you the ratio. And then you're going to use that ratio to multiply all the subscripts in the empirical formula to find the molecular formula's subs uh, subscripts. So let's do some of these. A sample of an unknown compound. Um, let's go ahead and make this smaller so I have enough room because I'm not going to have enough room. Let's just discard that. Let's make this 12. It's still big enough to see. A sample of an unknown compound is analyzed by a mass spec. It's found to contain 64.8% carbon, 13.62% hydrogen, and 21.58% oxygen. The molar mass of the compound is 74.14 grams per mole. Find the empirical and molecular formulas. So here we have percents. So I'm just going to write down what it has so far, okay? So I have 64.80% carbon, 13.62% hydrogen, and 21.58% oxygen. Now, Number one says we can't really do anything with percent. So the first thing we're going to do is convert percent to grams. The way we do that is by assuming we have a 100 gram sample. And I'm going to do this one in red. So this gives us 64.80 grams of carbon, 13.62 grams of hydrogen, and 21.58 grams of oxygen. Now the next thing it says to do is we can't use grams for anything either. 
we want to use moles. And so we're going to convert to moles using our molar mass. So from the periodic table, we know that we have 12.01 grams of carbon every time we have one mole. For hydrogen, we have 1.01 .01 grams every time we have one mole of hydrogen. And we have 16, oops, 0 .00 grams every time we have one mole of oxygen. Now, that's going to give us 64.8 divided by 12.01 gives us 5.396 moles of carbon. I try not to round too much, guys. Um, you don't want to round here until the very last step. 13.62 um, divided by 1.01 .01 is going to give us 13.485 moles of hydrogen. Oops, oh my. And 21.58 divided by 16.00 gives us 1.349 moles of oxygen. So that's number two. I forgot to write my number two there. Now, number three said that we really need to have whole numbers here. So we're going to divide all of these by the lowest. So we're going to divide every single one of these by 1.349. Goodness gracious. So 5.396 divided by 1.349 gives us 4. Then this is moles of carbon. Or really it's just uh, moles divided by moles gives us 4 carbons. 13.485 divided by 1.349. Okay, so here's um, where you can start to round. I only say you can round to the 100s place. Don't round anything else. And so I get 9.996. That 6 makes the, up, the other one go up. So we're going to just call this 10 hydrogens. And this gives us 1 oxygen. Now, because we have whole numbers, we don't have to go through this fourth step. We don't have to worry about a denominator here. So number five says to go ahead and use these to write our empirical formula. So we have C4H10O as our empirical formula. Now, the molecular formula has this molar mass. To compare it, we need to calculate the empirical formula's molar mass, and then we can compare those two. So I'm going to make a table. Um, just make sure I know what number. Uh, that's number six. So this is three. This is number five. Uh, let's do some. Let's do number six in green. Um, because I'm running out of room. I'm going to move all this over. So number five, let's put this here. C4H10O is equal to the AF. And then I can erase this and use my molecular formula up here. Okay, so number six says to find the molar mass. So atom, number, mass, and total. We have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, 4, 10, and 1. This is 12.01, 1.01, and 16.00. It gives us 48.04, 10.04, 1.01,
and 16. So if we add in our calculator, 48.04 plus 10.1 plus 16, you get 74.14. And this is the molar mass of the empirical formula. Now number seven, this was number six, says to find the ratio, we're going to take the molecular formulas, molar mass, over the empirical formulas, molar mass, to get our ratio. Well, that gives us 74.14 over this 74.14, which gives us a ratio of 1. Now, that means, basically, our molecular formula is the same as our um, molecular. Our molecular formula is the same as our empirical. But if you wanted to write it out, you could say eight is one times the empirical, which is C4H10O, which gives us C4H10O as our molecular formula. I need to stop writing on that side. Okay. So here's what, um, here's another example. Again, I would try to pause this and do the math on your own first and then come back to it when you've attempted it or if you get stuck. I'm going to assume that you've already done that. And so here we have 57.54% carbon, 3.45% hydrogen, and 39.01 percent fluorine. First thing we're going to do is we are going to assume a 100 gram sample. So that means we have 57.54 grams of carbon, 3.45 grams of hydrogen, and 39.01 grams of fluorine. We don't want to do anything with grams, we always want to go to moles. So we're going to convert to moles using molar mass. 12.01 grams and one mole of carbon. 1.01 grams of hydrogen and one mole. And this should be, we haven't used that one yet, but if you have your periodic table handy, it's 19.00. There we go. So, um, and it changes my color. One mole of fluorine gives us 19.00 grams. So in your calculator, you now have 57.54 divided by 12.01, which gives us 4.791 moles of carbon. 3.45 divided by 1.01, gives us 3.416 moles of hydrogen and 39.01 divided by 19 gives us 2.05 moles of fluorine. First thing we need to do is divide by the smallest here. So we're going to come down and we're going to divide every single one by this 2.05. And that's going to give us 2.33 moles of carbon. One point six six moles of hydrogen and one fluorine. Here is where we actually do have to do number four. So this was number two, this is number three. Number four said if we still didn't have whole numbers, we have to multiply. Now 2.33, hopefully you can tell that this has a denominator of three. It should be the same as seven thirds. Um, 
your calculator will convert between uh, fractions and decimals for you. I can tell you on the test, your number for this section will either be a whole number, it will end in something 0.5, indicating a fraction of something over 2. Um, it will end in something 0.33, indicating a fraction of something over 3. Um, if you wanted to, I guess you could also leave this as uh, 2 and 1 third. Maybe that would be more helpful. I tend to stick away from doing anything too complicated. I think the most I ever went to was something 0.25, which would be a fraction over 4. So this is going to be 1 and 2 thirds, or if you preferred, it would be uh, 5 thirds, however you wanted to do it. Um, this is still the same, so it doesn't matter. So to make this a whole number, number 4 says we have to multiply by the denominator. So we're going to multiply all of these by 3. Um, that's going to give us 7 here, 1.66 or 1 and 2 thirds times 3 is going to give us 5, and this is going to give us 3. So now we can use this to write our empirical formula. So we have C7, H5, F, I don't have the molecular formulas molar mass here, um, but I imagine it's probably going to be the same. So I'll just skip this step here and move to the next slide. Here, um, I do have the molar mass, and so we can do both the molecular and the empirical formulas here. Again, go ahead and pause this and try it on your own first, guys. That's the best way to really make sure you have an understanding here. For this compound, we have 40.00% carbon, 6.68. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm already skipping a step, aren't I? Percent carbon percent hydrogen, and 53.33 percent oxygen. Converting to moles, uh, excuse me, converting to grams, we're going to assume a 100 gram sample. So we have 40.00 grams of carbon, 6.68 grams of hydrogen, and 53.33 grams of oxygen. And that's number one. Second thing we do is we need to convert to moles. So we're going to divide this by 12.01 to get one mole of carbon. We're going to divide this by 1.01 to get one mole of hydrogen. And we're going to divide this by 16 to get one mole of oxygen. So 40.00 divided by 12.01 gives us 3.33. 6.68 divided by 1.01 .01 gives us 6.61 oops moles of hydrogen and 53.33 divided by 16.00 gives us 3.33 moles of oxygen. And that's number two. Number three says to go ahead and divide by the smallest. <clears throat> so we're going to divide all of these by 3.33. It gives us one carbon, two hydrogens, one oxygen. So here we don't have to worry about um, step number four. So we're going to skip that, go straight to number 5, which says the empirical formula is CH2O. Now don't get excited, guys, because there's so many formulas that have this empirical formula. Um, so we really need to do the math to make sure we know what we're, what's going on. 
So number six says if we're looking for the molecular formula, oh, this is our EF, we need to find the molar mass of our empirical. Let's go over here and do it. So we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, number, mass, total. Here we have one carbon, two hydrogens, one oxygen. You have a molar mass of 12.01 for carbon, 1.01 for hydrogen, and 16 for oxygen. It gives us 12.01, 2.02, and 16, or a total of uh, basically 30.03. And this is number six. Now number seven says in order to find the molecular formula, we need to divide the molecular formulas, oops, molecular formulas molar mass by the empirical formulas molar mass to get a ratio. So we're going to take 180 divided by 30.03, and because we're looking for a ratio, oops, this is going to be a whole number, and you can kind of tell it comes out to 6. So we're going to come down here for number 8 and say 6 times the empirical formula gives us C6H12O6 as our molecular formula. And that's how you do empirical formula problems. Now I do want to take a minute, guys, and I want to point out something. Any question on one of our exams um, has to take less than two and a half minutes. Now, in order for that to happen, I can't give you an eight-step problem. To me, that does not evaluate whether you understand the concept, because there's too many steps there where you could just make a small typo in your calculator, or you could mess something up. So in order to test an empirical formula question, there's a couple of ways I could do it. Technically, I prefer questions that keep it to two or three steps, um, no more than four. But if you look, this um, grams to percent or percent to grams, I don't really consider that a, a step per se because all you do for the percent, I mean, let me just show you how I would do it. The percent to grams, if I was in a hurry, I would just make this a grams and then get rid of this. Now I'm done. Um, that's basically all that step does. I don't consider that a mentally taxing um, step. However, going from grams to moles, oops, I did not mean to do that, going from moles by dividing the lowest and then possibly multiplying, I would consider that those steps. So I could ask you to give me the empirical formula, especially if I only have two atom, or two elements there, if I only have um, hydrogen and oxygen or carbon and hydrogen, something like that. I could expect you to go from um, grams to moles and get a whole number ratio there. Um, in fact, I think your sample questions have a problem just like that. The other thing I could do is I could say, I could give you the empirical formula and the molecular form formula's molar mass and ask you for the molecular formula. Well, the only thing you'd have to do there is find the uh, mo empirical formula's molecular weight. Then you would have to divide to get a ratio and then multiply the subscripts in the empirical formula. So that would be the second way I could ask a question here. It will not be an eight-step problem on the exam.